What's going on, you nerds? Uh, Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition is in beta right now on Steam and on the Beamdog website. Really fun game. Played a lot growing up back in like the 2000s and uh, now they're revamping it with an enhanced edition, some better graphics and such, and some duties. Um, so I'm going to teach you guys a little bit about Neverwinter Nights. Um, I think it's a game that everyone should try when it when it gets its official release. Uh, whenever that may be, I think a lot of people would probably jump back on it, play some multiplayer, maybe some single player, try to invite their friends. I don't think it was on Steam before, maybe it was like momentarily and then they kind of like took it off. So it's going to be nice having it back on Steam where like majority of PC players I think probably get their games. So I have a feeling Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition is going to be going to be growing again like it was in the 2000s um, I'm playing you know multiplayer some role play role playing servers that's always fun so um, should be nice seeing more people on but for you new people um, that want to learn about it maybe uh, get a, a head start in some tips and tricks before you get the game I'm gonna try to teach you guys some some things here and there or if you guys don't really know anything about Dungeons and Dragons at all, uh, I feel like this is a pretty good place to start because this is really how I got my start. I should say right now that this there's there's different uh, editions, different editions in Dungeons Dungeons and Dragons. This is the third edition. I think currently they're on their fifth edition, so a couple of iterations in between, but. Generally, the same rules apply. Same sorts of uh, math addition apply to certain like skills and stuff. I think just like the names and traits and feats and stuff here and there might have been changed, but for the most part, playing the game is sort of the same as any other any other version. Um, so we'll just get right into it. Just gonna do the prelude. Start a new character. Uh, get you guys uh, uh, acquainted with all this stuff. Uh, we got a gender here. You can choose whichever. There's no real difference uh, with male or female, at least in this game. Maybe in the newer editions, I think they have uh, certain like perks or feats and stuff that might give you like advantages. You know, in terms of like persuasion or like attack bonuses for certain genders. But I think for this game, at least the campaign, there's no real difference. I'll just choose male. Maybe in multiplayer servers, they might um, change a few things depending on the uh, gender that you are. It really just depends. Uh, so we got seven classes right here, or seven races. Seven races here. We got the humans, uh, we got the elves, we got the halflings, the half elves, the half orcs, the gnomes, and the dwarves. Super generic. Um, if you think about it in reality, like, as we all are humans, there's different um, different types of humans. There's like Caucasian, we got African American, Asian, you know, Hispanic, whatever. Same thing in this Forgotten Realms, Dungeons and Dragons universe. Uh, within the humans, within elves, there's different uh, sub races, I guess you can say. Um, you know, just sun elves, moon elves. There's like Lightfoot halflings, Ghostwise halflings. Strong heart halflings, I think there's one. Different half orcs, half elves, different gnomes, dwarves. Each kind of have their own uh, ability adjustments. So gnomes right now have plus two to constitution and minus two strength. If you are a different, uh, you know, sub 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 race of uh, gnomes, they might have a different uh, uh, gnomish adjustments, gnome, gnomish ability adjustments. Um, but this is very generic right now, which is which is fine. If you actually wanted to do those sub races, if you wanted to be a sun elf or a moon elf, you would type it in here. But I think in this game they don't have that programmed. If you go in multiplayer, sometimes they might, because uh, especially if they're high role playing servers, they they might add these uh, extra classes. Uh, but at least in the campaign, these are just the. Uh, these are just the ones that are given to you, so we'll go through this real quick. Uh, for humans, favorite class, probably one of the most complicated things that I think people 
don't really understand. Uh, I'll try to explain it as simple as I can, so... We'll go with a class that actually has a favorite class. Alright, so let's choose Elf for, for a second just to explain it. So the favorite class is Wizard. Favorite class is really only for uh, multi-class purposes, which uh, is basically means in this game you can... I guess maybe any uh, Dungeons & Dragons game too. Uh, you can uh, multi-class, which you can level up more than just one class if you wanted to be a wizard and then a fighter or a rogue and a ranger or a fighter and a barbarian or a cleric and a sorcerer you know whatever you have that ability to do that but depending on what class you choose in your favorite class you might have a uh, XP minus XP deduction penalty so let's say we're choosing a wizard let's say we're an elf with a favorite class of wizard just to explain this a little bit better, get a portrait, doesn't really matter about the portrait. Um, so, let's say for this for this uh, example, uh, well, we won't use a wizard, we'll just say we want to do an elf uh, fighter. Maybe we're playing on a multiplayer server and we're like, hey, I want to roleplay an uh, elven fighter. That sounds cool, right? So we're playing an elven fighter and... Uh, you know, we level up a couple times, let's say we're like a level 5 fighter, or a level 5 elven fighter. Oh, and by the way, you, you can multi-class, but you obviously can't switch races, because that would be kind of weird. Um, so once you choose a race, you can only stick with that race. So let's say we're choosing a fighter, and we're level fi we're a level 5 fighter. We played a little bit, and we're like, hey, I want to be a, uh, instead of a fighter, or not instead, but still have the fighter classes. Let's say I want to be a uh, sorcerer. Let's say I want to be a fighter sorcerer, not even a wizard, just a fighter sorcerer. So if I'm a level 6, I reach level 6, I was a level 5 fighter, I reach level 6, and I decide to multi-class to a sorcerer, I would be a level 5 fighter and a level 1 sorcerer. Now because neither of these two are my favorite class, favorite class is a wizard for an elf, since these two are not obviously wizard I would get a minus 20% XP deduction anytime I gain XP for whatever if I kill an enemy or do a quest or whatever like that I would get minus 20 XP deduction because the range between my two classes that are at my favorite class is more than one level so if I was level 5 fighter level 1 sorcerer I would get a minus 20% XP deduction no matter how far the the ranges for these two it would always be minus 20% until it's one level class between the two so let's say I played even longer I'm a level 5 fighter and I'm a level 3 sorcerer and then I leveled up and I'm like okay I want to level up my sorcerer again so when I'm a level 5 fighter and a level 4 sor sorcerer equaling level 9 obviously because it's only a one level difference that XP deduction goes away and so if I level up again and I'm a level 5 fighter and level 5 sorcerer same thing no XP deduction level up again 5 fighter 6 sorcerer no deduction but when I decide to level sorcerer again so I'm level 5 fighter and level 7 sorcerer then I get that XP deduction again now if we were to switch it where instead of sorcerer it was wizard which is the elf's favorite favorite class there would be no XP deduction at all. If I, even if I'm a level 1 wizard, level 5 fighter, no XP deduction. The favorite class basically just negates that uh, level range for that specific class. So even if, I'm, if I decide to be a monk and a wizard, if I was a level 30 monk and a level 1 wizard, that level range would be no difference. Or if you even just roll reverse it where I'm a level 30 wizard and a level 1 monk, same thing the wizard would just negate itself from the multi-classing uh, XP deduction and you would you would not get that. Now in this game you can multi-class uh, with three characters or three classes so if you wanted to be a uh, going back to the fighter uh, we'll just forget the wizard for a second if you want to just be a fighter monk and sorcerer so let's say I'm a level 10 fighter level 5 uh, sorcerer and a level 1 monk 10 fighter 5 uh, sorcerer 
and one monk, I would have minus 40% XP deduction. Since there's no favorite class for a wizard, and now we have three classes, and each of those have a level range of more than one. So fighter, between fighter and sorcerer, there's five levels, and then between monk and sorcerer, there's four levels. Then there's minus 40% deduction. Now, since we're elf and we have the wizard, um, wizard favorite class, so we'll just replace the sorcerer with the wizard in this example. So we've got level 10 fighter, level 5 wizard, and level uh, 1 monk. This wizard would negate, it, negate itself, so you would only have minus 20% deduction as opposed to minus 40% deduction. XP deduction. Only, only XP, nothing, nothing else. So just keep that in mind, if you want to multi-class, just understand uh, kind of what you're getting yourself, getting yourself into. If you want to multi-class, just make sure uh, you have that knowledge, because there's a lot of XP, you know, XP is important if you want to level up, especially in uh, role-playing like multiplayer servers where leveling is not an easy thing to do, you kind of, it's a slow grind. Uh, you just want to make sure you at least understand what you're doing and the uh, precautions and the uh, penalties that occur that you might not know because um, they don't really explain it that much it's kind of hard to a multi-class elf's wizard class does not count when determining whether he suffers an xp penalty for multi-classing so that's pretty much favorite class what that is if it's any favorite class is any uh, the half elves is the same thing favorite class any uh, half orc is barbarian rogue for halfling gnome is wizard dwarf is fighter so if you choose any and I think if you were to choose a sub race I am pretty sure the favorite class would be any too any basically means the highest level class that you have is the favorite class of, of that and I think uh, if you were to surpass that highest class that you have so let's say you're level 9 fight or level 10 fighter you're a half elf fighter and a sorcerer if you're a level 10 fighter and a level 5 sorcerer, you wouldn't get an XP deduction because uh, the half elf would just assume your favorite class is the fighter, which is the highest class, and then that sorcerer class would technically just be on its own, so you get no XP deduction. If your sorcerer were to surpass the fighter, if you would become level 12 sorcerer and then level 10 fighter at a certain point, you just kept leveling up your sorcerer, then your favorite class would be sorcerer, and then that's pretty much that. It's just whatever highest uh, highest class that, that uh, you are at that time. Um, you get special abilities too, depending on what class you are, or what race you are. Um, for humans, you get this uh, quick to master, which will give you uh, an extra feat at the first level, which is always nice. Uh, you get four skill points at the first level. It's a little bit different for everybody. For elves, they get a lot of special abilities being elves. They're immune to spells and effects of the sleep subtype. Uh, you get some bonuses to certain mind affecting spells, uh, proficiencies to longsword, la la la. You know, you guys can uh, read some of this stuff. Uh, it's good to uh, look at all this stuff just so at least uh, when building your character you understand uh, some of the bonuses you get. Maybe it'll just kind of swage you into choosing halfling. You get, hey, I get a plus one size bonus to attack rolls, being smaller than uh, a lot of the other races. You get a plus one AC for the size bonus. You get lucky, fearless. Some interesting stuff, depending on what uh, race you choose. Uh, for this instance, you know, this is just an example, so I'll just choose... Uh, you know, I'll be like a Legolas. Why not? Is Legolas full elf or is he half elf? I think he's full elf. But he's a range. He's like a, a ranger, sort of. So his favorite class is not a wizard. Legolas, what are you doing? Why isn't your favorite class? Why aren't you a wizard? Elves are all wizards. All right. So here we got the classes. We have uh, two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Am I counting right? There's eleven uh, classes to start off from, and then uh, as you continue to level up, you have the ability to uh, multi-class into prestige classes. We'll get to that in a second. 
So right now we got Barbarian as the first one. We'll go through this a little bit quick. Alignment restrictions, uh, any uh, non-lawful. So if you were to be a Barbarian, you cannot be lawful at all. Because if you were to think about it, Barbarians are like very wild. Um, you know, I always kind of consider them like Vikings or something. Um, Bard I think has one too. Um, alignment restrictions, any, any non-lawful. So you can't be lawful for them either. Uh, Ex-Bards cannot gain levels of experience while they're of any lawful alignment. So during the game, there are chance, there, there are times when you're doing quests and you know certain things, certain actions that will uh, either give you points towards lawful or give you points towards chaotic, and give you points toward good and give you points towards evil. And if you were to surpass that uh, alignment, then you would not be able to choose these certain classes that give you that alignment restriction. So if you were to become lawful at a certain point, then you would never be able to uh, become bard or Barbarian or any uh, unlawful uh, class that has that restriction but you can always do evil things and become uh, non-lawful or I shouldn't say evil things but any uh, chaotic things because uh, chaotic and lawful are uh, those two ends of the spectrum for spell casting there's two two types of spell casting there's a uh, divine spell casting which is uh, the cleric here spell casting divine wisdom based uh, spell failure, we'll get to that in a second. Um, the Druid is also a Divine Spellcaster, Divine Paladin Spellcaster, uh, Divine Spellcasting Paladin Spells Divine, and Ranger, which is Divine Wisdom Based, all Wisdom Based. So we got the Divine Spellcasters and the Arcane Spellcasters, which are the Bard, Arcane Spellcasting, Charisma Based this time. And sorcerer spell casting arcane charisma based as well, and then the wizard, who is not charisma based, uh, spell casting arcane intelligence based. So the main differences between uh, divine and arcane, uh, one of them is the um, it is the what is it called again? Arcane spell failure, spell failure, spell failure from armor. So. There are different types of armor that you, you can wear, from like light armor to heavy armor. And uh, light to heavy each have their own uh, spell failure, arcane spell failure, which is the percentage for uh, spell casters to fail because the armor is just too heavy. There's armor they're not used to. Because arcane spell casters are usually trying to wear light armor so they can cast spells, they can motion with their hands and you know, that sort of thing. Um, so th if you wear heavier armor, there's a bigger chance of you failing to cast the spell, which is a terrible thing if you're a spellcaster, because that's pretty much everything that you can do is spellcast. Um, for heavier armor, it can be like 50% sp spell failure, so half the time there's a, th you'll uh, cast a spell that just won't cast, it'll just fail. So watch out for that. Divine, they don't have that. Divine spellcasting, they can wear the heaviest of armor, there's going to be no spell failure, they're always 100% be able to cast spells. Unless of course they're getting attacked, then there's a chance they could spell, they, they could uh, lose their concentration and uh, not cast a spell, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, that's pretty much uh, what spell failure is, just the chance of you not being able to cast a spell depending on how heavy or light the armor is. I think if you even wear light armor, there's like a 10% chance it will it'll fail which is not bad but I don't think you really want even a chance to not cast a spell um, the also uh, also the difference between arcane and and divine arcane is a lot more like offensive they can cast like you know fireballs and a lot of elemental spells and like death spells and everything in between you know but divine is more you know uh, more like buffs and healing and a little bit more defensive I think um, not that they don't have any offensive spells or not that the arcane spellcasters have any defensive spells because they do but I think it's just more geared towards arcane is more offensive and uh, divine is more defensive proficiencies uh, there's different types of weapons that are all categorized differently uh, you got simple simple to martial weapons or just uh, some of it there's, there's a lot that kind of categorized differently 
light armor, medium, or medium armor, and shields. So this basically means the Barbarian is allowed to use all weapons that are in the category of simple and martial weapon. And uh, they can wear any light armor or medium armor and shields. So they can't wear heavy armor. The only way uh, Barbarians can wear heavy armor is to actually get the, the feet or the perk, in, in uh, other words. And you can get a feat every uh, third level, and every fourth level uh, you have a chance to upgrade uh, one of your ability scores, which uh, we'll get to that in a second. Um, for spellcasting, uh, for any spellcaster, divine or arcane, uh, to be able to cast a certain level spell, you would have to have uh, a score of at least 10 plus, uh, depending on what level spell you want to cast. If you want to cast a uh, third level spell for a bard, then you would have to have a charisma at least 13. A charisma of 10 will only allow you to cast like cantrips, which are basically like the lowest of the low spell uh, spell levels you can get. Uh, so if you want to cast fourth level spells, you would have to have a charisma of 14. Same thing with the druid, except for uh, charisma, it's just wisdom. So uh, if you want to cast a fourth level spell, 14. Same thing with paladin. Um, with wisdom too. Second level spells, you need a wisdom of at least 12. All you have to do is really just look at that last, or I guess it's the first digit. For thinking about real mathematics, I think this is first digit. Whatever number that is, then that's basically the level spell you can cast. If you have a wisdom of 14, or charisma of 14, or intelligence of 14, if we're talking about the wizard, you can cast fourth level spells. Uh, if you want to cast ninth level spells, you gotta be level 19. Pretty simple. Just have to look at that uh, first digit. Um, hit die. Uh, if you don't know how to read this, D12 is basically uh, since there's no number here, you would just assume it's one. So you would roll one D12. So Dungeons and Dragons actually started off as like a tabletop. So a D basically just means like a die or dice. So if you have one D12, it's basically one die of a uh, twelve-sided dice. If it's like 2d10 or something, it would be two 10-sided dice. If it was like 3d8, it would be three 8-sided dice that you would roll. Um, so for this, for hit die, it's basically just hit points, the amount of hit points you can get uh, per level. So every time you level, you have a chance to add skill points and whatnot, and you also gain health. So this hit die basically just means when you level up, you have a chance of either getting 1 health to 12 health plus uh, constitution which we'll get to that in a second and any other perks that will allow you to get more HP as you level up but that's basically how you read it uh, it's just the first number or the number on the left is basically how much dice is being used and this, the right number is uh, the sided dice how many uh, you know sides of the dice it is um, proficiencies we got to that uh, oh by the way hit dice is uh, different for everybody Hit die for the bard is 6. It's a lot lower, but you should expect that from spellcasters. Clerics are a little bit different. D8. Clerics are kind of like a mix between front lines and spellcasting, which is good. Got the druid at D8. Fighter is D10. Monk is D8. You get the idea. They also can't be, uh, or they have to be lawful. Um, I think that's pretty much it. You can kind of go through all these classes to see which one you prefer uh, skill points basically just gives you how many skill points you can get so uh, we'll choose, uh, I don't even remember what oh yeah, I'm an elf uh, oh yeah, I said we're gonna do a Legolas, alright let's do like a Legolas one um, get the d10, spell casting, ranger spells, divine so that you, always, you just wanna make sure you understand what your character is so you can properly plan it in Dungeons and Dragons, uh, you, what you want to do is try to make the least amount of mistakes as you can because, um, you know, if you make too many mistakes, your character is not going to be, uh, you know, in, in full strength as you would want him or her to be. Uh, the, less, the less mistakes that you make, the stronger your character could be and the more fleshed out your character could be. Uh, so you just want to make sure you understand what you're doing just to help you kind of... Uh, build that pathway that you want to build with, with your character. Um, 
for alignment. I, for Ranger, there's no uh, no real alignment necessary to, to choose. You can really just choose whatever. For Rangers, you know, they're usually like wild, out in the wild in the forest. So they wouldn't necessarily be lawful. Maybe in the middle, maybe even chaotic too. Uh, I'll just go uh, neutral good, why not? Uh, if you had a class that actually uh, was a specific to a, an alignment, like alignment restrictions and you're not non-lawful, if we were to choose an alignment, you couldn't choose any lawful, it would just be grayed out. Same thing for, you know, Bard. I think Bard had a similar one. Uh, any non-lawful, it would just be grayed out. Uh, so we'll just choose Ranger. No, uh, nothing uh, to look forward to there. Um, go to neutral. Oh, actually, I was gonna say neutral good. Let's choose neutral good. Uh, you can see a little bit of your stats as as you're building your character. Um, but it's not fully finished yet, so there's a lot of uh, stuff missing. This you can do recommended if you want. You get 27 points to spend on uh, all your uh, ability scores. You got the strength, dexterity, constitution, wisdom, intelligence, and charisma. Strength, very generic, just for fighters. Uh, measures the muscle and physical power of your character. This ability is especially important for fighters, barbarians, paladins, rangers, and monks because it would help them prevail in combat. Uh, it also uh, uses it for uh, uh, carrying capacity too. Uh, so how much you can carry, it's all by weight. It's not just like inventory slots. They do have inventory slots obviously, but uh, your character can only uh, carry a certain amount before he becomes encumbered. Then he's like, he walks a little bit slower, then you can become like heavily encumbered, where you walk super slow. Um, so as a, as a ranger, you know, since mine's up there, I'll, I'll put a, I'll put 12 right now. Uh, dexterity is a, uh, for agility, reflexes, and balance, obviously for rangers too. Um, oh, by the way, for strength. Strength also adds to your uh, attack bonus. So let's, uh, we'll just do recommend real quick just to look at this. So this is your attack bonus. Basically just means uh, when you're rolling a d20, which is a uh, one dice, one 20 sided dice, it'll always use that for attacking. So let's say I'm attacking like a zombie or something. If I were to roll something between one and 20, let's say it was a 10, uh, you would t it would take your attack bonus, which is plus three right now. And so it would add 10 plus three, 13. And if that number is greater than the armor class, which is this of the zombie, Let's say the zombie's armor class was a 10. 10 plus 3 is 13, obviously more than the uh, armor class. That's a successful hit. If it was less than 10, or equal to, I think, I think it's equal to 10, then that's uh, a miss. It's known as a miss, or like a graze, depending on how, uh, or what edition you're using. Because I think the 5th edition has graze, which basically means when you're really close to the armor class, or maybe if you hit the armor class, um, then you would uh, do a certain fraction of the amount of damage. It might be the same as armor class, or maybe... I would have to double check that. I'm not too sure. Um, the strength also determines the uh, damage modifier, so basically... If this was a successful hit, you had 10 plus 3, 13 over the a zombie, you know... Uh, a zombie's armor class of 10, then you would do you roll this damage which is 1 to 3. I'm not wearing, uh, obviously I don't have an armor, so or I don't have a weapon, so my damage is only 1 to 3. I'm, I'm like punching a zombie, basically. So I've been doing 1 to 3 damage, plus 2, which is uh, coming from the strength modifier. So let's say I rolled a 2, you would add plus 2, it would do 4 damage. If I did 1 plus, three, plus 2 equals 3, you get it. Um, we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, so that's for that. For dexterity, it's more for ranged. Um, so if you had a bow and arrow, or a crossbow, or if you're th trying to throw weapons, if you you can throw darts or throwing axes or whatever, um, that attack bonus that uh, that melee weapons would have, if it was a thrown or ranged weapon, it would use your dexterity. So if I had a bow and arrow, instead of plus three, um, I would have a uh, plus five, I think. Um, attack bonus for melee weapon is the strength. But you get uh, the base attack is one, so uh, it would be uh, attack bonus plus one when you're starting at level one. It's a little bit different depending on what class you were, 
I think if you're more of a uh, spellcaster, I think your attack bonus would start off at zero and then add that strength of whatever it was. But because I'm a ranger, uh, my attack bonus would be plus one, and then the strength is adding two, which is why it's three. Um, so dexterity is for the range weapons. It also adds to your armor class, and if you think about it logically, it's like dexterity is how well you can move. So it, it's sort of like a, a dodge bonus to your armor class, which is why it's 14. Armor class, it's always a 10. 10 is usually the uh, default uh, armor class. So it would be 10 plus the modifier of 4. So it's 10 plus 4 because 14. Generally, any addition, any sort of math that you would do is usually with this, the modifier, which is this. This is the score, your ability score, and this is the uh, modifier. Um, so you don't necessarily have to worry about the scores. I guess if for for a spellcaster we went through, uh, you know, that first digit, it has to be the spell level. Um, so that's I guess that's really the only time that you need it. Um, you know, this is all right as a ranger. Constitution is for hit points. Um, so I said before, when you level up, you have that uh, hit die. Uh, the Constitution modifier will uh, add to the amount of HP that you get. Um, it's also for uh, one of your uh, saving throws. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, no more hit points. Uh, constitution never increases. Hit points increase retroactively. Uh, so which basically means if you added more constitution, uh, it would add more to your uh, hit points. And that's basically for everybody. That's, that's generally an all-around uh, ability that everyone probably uses. Um, you know, if you're a spellcaster, obviously you wouldn't need that much strength because you're not really hitting anyone that often. Uh, wisdom, as we've seen with spellcasters, uh, it's pretty important. It's important for clerics and druids, as well as uh, rangers, which I know. Increases the number of spells, significant for paladins and rangers. It's important for monks as well, modifying their abilities. Uh, wise character, we don't have to read that. Uh, so interesting about, um, for monks, is monks uh, they can't really use armor if they use armor then sort of negates the uh, whole purpose of a monk and their abilities uh, and you wouldn't be able to use any monk abilities if you had any armor or shield so for monks wisdom and dexterity is used for their armor class so if I was a monk then I would have a plus five to my armor class so I would have uh, that base of 10 armor class plus four plus one would be 15 uh, so if you're a monk, you'd probably uh, try to add a lot of dexterity and wisdom. Um, but I'm a ranger, uh, so right now I'd be able to cast level 3 spells, which is alright as a level 1 ranger. If I wanted to, I can just upgrade this even more when I level up, or get some items that could uh, increase my wisdom. That's pretty good. Maybe we'll take out some dexterity. Let's Maybe we'll try to even this out a little bit. I got three more points, alright. Um, Intelligence. Oh, by the way, up here you can uh, see you got a base ability score of 14, racial bonus. That's basically whatever race that you chose and might add or subtract to your uh, ability scores. So I think I started off with 8 at this point. Uh, ability modifier plus 1. That's basically the modifier here. Um, intelligence. If you. Uh, have a intelligence lower than nine it basically means that your character cannot speak properly it's kind of like a broken English so to speak um, especially in uh, in role-playing servers and multiplayer you would have to act out as your character so if you had a character with an intelligence of eight then you would have to pretend that you couldn't speak English properly much like myself cannot speak English properly um, and when you're playing the campaign uh, when your character is talking to someone else you know, you have different uh, options you can choose from what to say. Those options would, would be broken English, basically. But generally, the characters would still understand you, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, it's also important to note that these modifiers affect all of your uh, skills, including the negatives. So if I had this negative one uh, intelligence, any skill that uses intelligence would decrease by one, whereas all these other ones would except the charisma would be increased by whatever amount so just keep that in mind too 
Uh, I try not to have any negatives, sort of, even out this character. Uh, since I'm a ranger, I don't really need intelligence. Not that big of a deal for me. Uh, it affects how many spells I can cast for wizards. Uh, how hard spells to resist. Strong assortment of skills. Uh, by uh, If you have more intelligence, uh, you also get more skill points. So I think, uh, depending on the modifier, you would get that much more skill points anytime you level up. So if you had 5 skill points every time you level up, if you had plus 1 intelligence, it would be 6. If you add another one, it would be 7. And these modifiers increase every 2 after 10. So when the moment you hit 10, that's basically like the flat line of it. Then every 2 you get uh, the modifier is increased. So you get 2. When you get to 16, it's plus 3. If you were to get 18, 4, or 5, whatever. You get it. Um, and also, the, this also determines certain uh, feats that you get, or perks, in other words. So certain uh, feats would only be available to you if you had a certain amount of strength, or dexterity, or constitution, or wisdom, intelligence. Uh, so there's a, a feat that I like, that you have to have an intelligence of at least 13. So I'll just have 13 for me here. Uh, maybe I'll put that wisdom on too. This is not too bad for a ranger, it's alright. Uh, we'll just uh, leave it at that. Oh, the cost increase also increases depending on how high these uh, ability scores are, so your cost increases too. Uh, so if you were to upgrade this even more, you would need two skill points instead of one. If I had one skill point remaining, try to add on dexterity, it wouldn't. Unless I have two points, then it would upgrade to 17. But I don't need to do that right now. Um, I'm fine with this. Charisma is uh, not for rangers, so I don't really need it, but it's important for paladins, sorcerers, and bards. Uh, we kind of saw that. Oh, not for paladins. It was uh, wisdom based, but paladins have certain spells that uh, will use the charisma modifier to uh, affect it. Um, so it's always good for paladins, sorcerers, and bards for spell casting. Uh, turn on dead, that's basically what it is for our paladins and clerics. Um, it's also helping with, uh, you know, bartering. Anytime you want to talk to NPCs, um, it affects that. Um, and uh, influences bards and spells, bards and sorcerers, spells, not intelligence. Alright, so this is this is how I kind of want to do it, at least for ranger. You, it can be different for everyone, you know. If you want a ranger that's more melee fighting, then you can maybe you can upgrade this. Um, if, maybe if you don't want him to sp uh, cast so many spells or something, maybe he's not going to be much of a spellcaster at all, maybe he's just going to be more of a fighter. You can uh, mix and match. It's really up to you. Um, uh, I'm okay with uh, with this, it's alright. Um, and as you continue on to make your character, then uh, you know, this, this, your stat sheet will sort of fill out. Uh, we'll get to this a little bit later, we'll just do this packages stuff. So this packages is basically the skills packages. If you want to just choose a package that already kind of gives you all the all the skill points for that particular package. If you want to be a giant killer or a stalker and a warden, you can just choose that and it'll automatically um, assign the skill points. I like to configure my packages. That's what she said. Um, <laughs> that makes no sense. I don't know. Um, so these are all the skills. Um, these really are are all the skills. Like you're not, there's not hidden ones like like with feats and stuff. These are all the ones you can get. Animal empathy. I'm not gonna go through all this because there's a lot. But uh, animal empathy is basically uh, subduing animals and maybe even um, dominating them. So they're they're uh, sort of like your companion for momentarily, which is only for Druid and Ranger. So some skills are only for specific classes. This one's for all classes, for all classes. This use magic device is only for bards and sorcerers, or bards and rogues, I mean. But, uh, can't really see that. This is for bards, which is why it's grayed out. Um, class skill basically just means it's a skill for your class. So, um, the cost is only one, as opposed to non-class skills, which cost two. So, if I want to put one here, it will go down by two. And the maximum is actually decreased by half too, so uh, I can only choose two non-class skills uh, at the beginning, but for class skills I can get up to four. Um, it shows it right here, like the ability scores. 
Um, but for ro or for rangers, you know, I might as well get some anim animal empathy. I want to talk to some animals. Concentration. Uh, we were talking about uh, our, uh, arcane spell failures. Uh, this is uh, for the getting hit while you're casting spells, as opposed to just the the weight of the armor. So our made whenever your character is distracted during the act of casting a spell, um, which also which basically means when you're in the middle of casting a spell and someone tries to hit you, um, you would have to make this concentration check to see if you would succeed in in finishing up the spell casting or if you fail, thus uh, stopping you from casting a spell. Uh, we got some crafting, disable traps. I'm not gonna go through all of this, but heal, hide, you know, all this stuff. Lores for like identifying objects. And uh, you know, learning history and stuff. If you're uh, playing on a role-playing server, we got some stealth, parrying. I guess I'll describe because that's sort of like a, if, like kind of like favorite class, which no one kind of under understood. Uh, parrying is basically uh, counterattacking. Uh, so when you're uh, attacking or being attacked, uh, you would use your armor class basically to. Uh, counteract someone's uh, attack bonus and attack attack roll um, but for parrying if you were to activate it it would basically use this parrying skill number as opposed to your armor class so if you had a parrying of 12 or a parrying of like 20 and then you activated it uh, the def your defense would now use the 20 as the armor class instead of you know if you had an armor class of like 15 which is good because it's higher, stronger defense. Um, but early on, because you can only upgrade four right now, and then as you level up, you can only add one extra one. So it would take a long time for you to get high up. But once you do get high up, it's really effective. Um, but you can only counterattack depending on the amount of uh, attacks per round that you have, and that's going to get a little bit complicated too. Um, but basically, uh, the higher level you are, the more attacks per round you can get. A round is basically six seconds um, so you know during the first few levels you can only attack once per round so once every six seconds you can do an action you can either you know take a potion or attack or you know whatever only like one action every six seconds but as you gain more levels then you'll have more attacks per round I think up to like five maybe five or six even more if your uh, other classes that give you the ability to double your attack attack rate I know monks have it and uh, certain classes have it um, so that's what pairing does it just basically um, switches your armor class for the skills uh, skill number and then you can counter attack uh, with the amount of times you can actually attack per round so if you have two people attacking you let's say you're you know you're level one your pairing is four let's say it's four and you activate it um, which you probably shouldn't do it if you're early on because four is nothing but let's say you were to do it you had one attack per round you activated it uh, and someone was not successful in going over this number let's say it was they rolled a one and then they had an attack bonus of one it was two that basically gives you the opportunity to counter attack um, if the parry is successful and the difference between the roll and the DC is 10 points or greater. Oh, it, oh, it's not even exactly. Oh, it's 10 points or greater. Oh, it's even worse. Um, counter attack is a free attack made by the parrying and gets full attack bonus against the parried opponent. All right, so it has to be 10 or more. So you should not even do it when you're, you know, level one or two. You probably have to do it when you're like level, you know, 10 or something or maybe even higher. So at least you can boost up your class is pairing a skill and there's also items that can give you bonuses to certain skills so but that's basically what it does just a counter attack uh, I don't really like using it um, at least not for this character uh, riding is for horses you can you can ride horses here it's not in the campaign though so if you're playing in the campaign don't bother putting any points in this uh, ride skill um, oh it also says it here horses in the ride skill are only used in the premium module uh, Neverwinter Nights, uh, Wyvern Crown of Cormier, and specific community-made modules. So I guess if you're playing multiplayer and they have horses, you can you can add that. But campaign doesn't have it, so you don't really need it if you're playing the campaign. Persuade for talking, pickpocketing, set traps, uh, taunting. You can taunt people. Tumble. 
always a good uh, skill to have because for every five ranks in the skill, not including dexterity bonus, uh, the character's armor class is also improved by plus one. Always good to get more armor class. It's pretty much free, so I always uh, try to upgrade tumble whenever I can, even if it is a cross class skill. So like I'm using four points on this as opposed to like two. But uh, you know, tumble is important. I, I like getting more uh, AC whenever I get the opportunity. Use magic devices only for rogues and bards. But that basically gives you the uh, opportunity to use uh, other items or weapons or armor that would not be would not be allowed for you to use it if you were a certain race or class. So let's say I was like a halfling, or like let's say I was a, a human rogue. Let's say I was a human rogue and I had some points in this, and I found uh, armor that was only uh, could only be used for like elves or half elves, depending on how high this use magic devices that would allow me to wear that armor even if I didn't have that pre prerequisite prerequisite uh, to use it so even if I was a human I could still use it if I had some points and use magic device um, so rogues and birds are always good for that use magic device it's always good um, that's pretty much it for this stuff spellcrafting is basically the same thing as parrying but like the spell version of it you can't uh, parry a, a spell and you can't spellcraft the uh, melee attack. Uh, so that's pretty much it for uh, these skills. You, you can kind of read up more on it if you want. Uh, let's see what the recommended is for a ranger. You got animal empathy, concentration, uh, nothing on discipline. You got some heal, got some hide, some listen, no lore. I'm gonna put some lore. I mean I'm not really gonna use this character, this is just for uh, reference but it's always nice. Search is for like traps and stuff. Alright, who cares? This is good enough. And we go on to the feats, or the perks in other words. So on the right we have ones that are already uh, gained from uh, a race or class that you chose. Uh, so different weapons. We got martial, we got elven weapons. Trackless steps, which, uh, what is this? Plus four to hide and move silently checks. Oh, that's cool. When in wilderness areas. Makes sense for a ranger. Uh, low light, immunity to sleep, dual welding. Yeah, you can dual weld. Rangers, uh, they get this bonus for free. Um, oh, while wearing a heavy or medium heavy armor, they lose this benefit. So, uh, if you wanted this, you would have to only wear light armor. Uh, and if you wear anything other than light armor, then this would uh, not be available or not basically like negate its use. Um, so here's some other stuff. Here's some other feats. I'm not gonna go through all this either. This is way too much. This is the the perk that I was talking about with the plus 13 intelligence. Uh, it gives you a plus five to AC, but receiving a minus five penalty to attack rolls, which basically means you gain five five armor, but you lose uh, you're just less uh, accurate with your attacks. Uh, favorite enemy. This is for ranger specific or harper. Uh, you get a plus one bonus to damage on whatever enemy that you want. So if you're to choose this, you can choose a certain race. If you don't like orcs, I feel like Legolas would have this for orcs. His uh, favorite enemy would probably be orcs. Um, so that's something you can do. That's cool for rangers. You got improved parry. You got some other stuff here. Power attack. Point blank shot. Um, thug, I think, is for... Oh, no, wait. Toughness. Toughness is the... For hit points, hit points are gained retroactively when choosing this feat, so you just uh, you gain one extra hit point per level, which is pretty cool early on. Weapon finesse, so instead of, uh, you know, you get that arm, instead of uh, strength using for melee weapons, you know, it uses your strength for your attack bonus. Um, this weapon finesse actually uses your dexterity instead of your strength, so. Character with this feat is adept at using light weapons subtly, I mean, it could be any weapon really. Uh, allowing him to make melee attack rolls with his dexterity modifier instead of his strength if his de dexterity modifier is higher than his strength. If it's lower, no point in getting it. Uh, oh, it's automatic when uh, using any of these ones. Which is all like the smaller the smaller weapons. Weapon focus, weapon proficiency exotic. Get to use exotic weapons, two-bladed sword, shuriken, scythe, katana, kukri. Uh... Bastard Sword, some of the stuff like that. I feel like that's a Jon Snow thing, Bastard Sword. 
All right. Uh, yeah, that's some of that stuff. You know, I'm not gonna go through all of it. I feel like as a ranger, maybe point blank shot is good. Um, which basically uh, negates this minus four penalty when you're uh, at a certain distance from an enemy. So a character this feat negates the minus four penalty attack penalty, which is for using missile weapon or missile weapons in melee, which is basically like uh, you know bow and arrow or crossbow or whatever, and actually gains an additional plus one to attack and damage uh, with ranged weapons when the target is within 15 feet. Makes sense for a ranger, doesn't it? And you get that favorite enemy. Um, We'll choose orcs because that's Legolas's uh, favorite enemy, I think. And that's pretty much it. We'll go through this real quick. Um, no, uh, no uh, weapon used right now because we're still at the beginning. Attack bonus we talked about already. Damage we talked about already. Oh, a critical threat range. 20 basically means uh, so when you roll a d20, uh, let's say you're attacking an enemy, you always roll a d20 no matter what. For the computer will generate a, a d20 dice roll. If it hits 20 then that's a critical threat, you would roll again, or the computer would roll again, and if that second roll hits, then that basically uh, counts as a critical hit, and that whatever damage you do, you would double that. Certain weapons have a, a bigger uh, th threat, critical threat range. Um, because I'm unarmed, uh, it's 20, it might depend on, on what class you choose to. Some weapons would have a critical threat of 19 or 20, so if you were to roll a 19 or 20, that's a critical threat. You would roll again, if it attacks, or if it uh, hits, then you would use this multiplier with uh, uh, whatever damage you did. I think it goes up to 17 out of 20, maybe 16, I'm not 100% sure. Um, so obviously the bigger the, th the th critical range, then the better it is, because the better chance of you getting a critical hit. If you do get a critical... Um, if you roll a critical uh, hit, but your second roll, which determines uh, if you hit or miss, if you miss it, you would still attack. You just wouldn't do the uh, multiplier, or multiplier, uh, the multiplier. It would just be a normal damage. Um, offhand weapon, don't have that right now, although we could. Fortitude is basically just anything that involves uh, affecting your body I guess your like physical well-being so if you're if, if a zombie bit you or something and uh, there's a chance that you can get diseased from that this fortitude would basically be the defense for that you would roll a d20 add your fortitude if it was higher than the DC of the zombies bite or whatever then you would successfully save that disease bite or poison bite if it was less than the DC of the zombie then uh, you would fail that and then you would be diseased from that and then disease you know it could be like minus strength or minus constitution it's usually like one of these strength or constitution would usually affect fortitude um, but fortitude of or constitution affects fortitude so if we had 14 constitution it would be a two modifier then that fortitude would be two um, and I think that that increases as you as you progress to level up, this this will increase. You can also get more items and stuff that will increase that. Um, so that's what fortitude is. It's more like your well-being, like your physical, uh, you know, the, your physical feeling. Reflex is more like traps and, and any sort of spells um, that would uh, give you the opportunity to evade it real quick. So it's a lot of like light foot, a lot of like feet work, footwork. Um, so, you know, if you were to accidentally step on a trap, you would get a chance to avoid that trap. Uh, so when you use your reflex, you would roll a d20, add three to your uh, that roll. If it you know succeeds, then you only take half damage. If you fail, you take full damage of the trap. Uh, it also works with like spells, certain spells. If a, if a spell catcher casts fireball, there's a chance you can uh, evade that with reflex, which is kind of cool. And uh, reflex also uses dexterity. So three and three. If I had two. Then this would be two. Will is for uh, any mind affecting spells. So like, if uh, if someone's trying to cast like sleep or daze or you know confusion or something, that will basically use your will. Roll a d20, add the will, success, no mind affecting, fail, then you get mind affected, and that uses uh, wisdom. So if I had one more, I would have had two. This would have been two. Um, but yeah, all these will progress as you level up. Um, Base attack, uh, it's not really that necessary to know, it, it, it kind of just tells you the amount of uh, 
like your base at attack bonus and like the amount of uh, attacks per round that you have. Um, it's not really necessary to know what that is. Um, spell resistance, just the, the ability to resist any spell that's cast on you. Right now we don't have any. Um, it's usually you get it from like a spell or certain feats depending on what class you are. Arcane spell failure, we talked about that. Because I'm not wearing any armor, there's 0%. Uh, if I were to wear armor, it would uh, increase. There's also a certain uh, feats that you can get or perks that uh, would basically just negate this. So you, you could wear full armor if you're a, a wizard and be able to cast spells, but you would need to get that perk to do it. Armor check penalty, uh, we'll get into that when we get in the game, just so it's a little easier to explain. Alignment, obviously, we know what alignment is. Uh, you can also go here for skills. Uh, each skill has the ability uh, attached to it, so spot is wisdom. So we didn't put any uh, skill points in spot at the time, but because I got one wisdom modifier, it adds to one. Search uses intelligence, dexterity, you know, so forth. Um, we're going to customize this. You don't. It's not really necessary. This is just a way to customize your character. This is just your base outfit. Sure, why not? I'll put a robe on. It will be a. I'll be like a black. I'll be like a black. A black elf. I'll be like a drow. All right. Um. So we got this final part here. Character info. Uh, this is the description of your character, which uh, really is just for multiplayer. Uh, people are able to examine your character. They can right-click on your character and, and click examine. Then they can see uh, your description. So if you wanted to make a little backstory of your character, you can write that down. Uh, this is just a generic one, you know, if you were to write, uh, you know, let's write, uh, Paul Rudd's brother. So if anyone wants to, uh, examine my character, they can see I'm Paul Rudd's brother. Which makes no sense, but who cares. Age, no real difference in age. I mean, obviously in real life there is, but... In this game, you know, you can literally be a thousand years old. I don't think there's any, uh, there's no repercussions for it. You can even go like to this. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's really only for like multi or uh, role playing purposes. If you're playing on a multiplayer server, different types of uh, voices. Um, maybe you can put your own. I'm not even sure how this works, but I'm pretty sure you can just like, record your own voice and, and import it in the game, maybe. Um, first and last name, obviously. Generate name if you want to. Deity is basically just a god that you believe in, um, which you don't need to put in if you don't want to. Uh, multiplayer pur purposes again, um, and there's also you know different types of gods. It's not you don't put Jesus Christ on here or you know friggin uh, Muhammad or something. You know it's like a Dungeons and Dragons deity. You know like Sylvanus or you know something weird like that. Torm. Uh, we don't need a de oh actually for ranger you would need a deity but. Uh, this is for a campaign, you don't really need it, who cares. Alright, so let's just play. Um, get into a little bit about some of these uh, skills and uh, stuff like that. I'm just going to skip that real quick. Alright, so here we are. You go in your inventory, you got some armor. Armor check penalty, we'll get to this now. So basically this is a zero. Armor check penalty, if it was a negative, it would basically uh, minus... Uh, all the dexterity uh, skills that you have on here so we'll get to this we'll look at that some of the armor we'll just uh, ignore this guy ignore this guy we'll just get to the uh, that shop where you can look at some of the armor in the training halls what up Olgert this is how dwarves look like in the game at least uh, one of them I already know how it works don't need a tutorial I would see your inventory that's what she said all right so um, here are all the uh, robes and, and clothing items. Um, arcane spell for is zero, so if you're casting a spell, nothing. Armor check penalty is nothing. We've got some shields here. Armor check penalty minus two, so... Oh, actually, we got a chain and shirt right here. Alright, so... Uh, base armor class, basically just the armor of it. So if I were to put this on, I would add, I would add plus four. Base armor class, four. So you just add four to your armor class which is 17 um, 
which makes more sense, obviously. Uh, maximum dexterity bonus basically just means uh, if your 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 dexterity is capped off at at four at a bonus of four. So let's say if I had a uh, eighteen, which would be four, that's the maximum. If I were to get twenty and then five, uh, this number would still stay at four, because this armor only allows a maximum dexterity of four, and uh, all these skills would still remain. You know, adding plus four instead of plus five, so it just keeps that maximum dexterity at four. Even if you had thirty, if you had thirty score here, it would still be four instead of uh, whatever <laughs> whatever number that's supposed to be ten, I guess. I don't know. Um, armor check penalty is uh, for dexterity as well. It, it's minus two, so all the skills that use dexterity would. Uh, subtract two from it so we're wearing hide right now or not wearing hide but you know we have the hide right here this has no armor check penalty and it's also a maximum of six so if we were to put that on we would get more hide and anything that would associate uh, with dexterity so since move silently is dexterity it went down two because of this armor check armor check penalty of minus two since this is zero it would add to it instead see very simple um, and obviously the the heavier the armor then the more armor check penalty you would have the more arcane spell you would have and the less maximum dexterity bonus it would have and you might be able to see that here oh maybe not there's no heavy armor here but yep basically minus one maximum of four arcane spell you're minus 20 or 20 percent so you get a 20% chance of you not even casting the spell, it would just stop the spell from casting. Uh, so that's a little bit about armor check penalty and, and uh, spell failure. Uh, we got weight, talking about the weight before with strength. So this is how much I can carry. Um, and you know, each item is different in weight. Uh, we got some potions here. Cure light wounds. Uh, we got a short bow here. Uh, 1d6 damage. 3 multiplier. If there's no uh, number like we saw 20 before with uh, looking at unarmed, you know, we had that 20 and then that multiplier 3. If it's just times 3, it's basically just 20. If you roll a 20, then that's a critical threat. Uh, this one has 19 to 20 times 2. This one has 19 to 20 times 2. Some are 18 to 20, some are 17 to 20. The rapier is a good one, 18 to 20. Uh, you know, it's a little bit different. Uh, we got bows and arrows here. You can add your arrows. There's this thing called bullets, which are for slings. Slings uses bullets, which are like rocks, basically. Just these rocks. Uh, and we got bolts here for uh, any Norman Reedus fans. If you wanted to use a crossbow, you can use a crossbow. Uh, got some weapons here. Interesting weapons. Um, uh, we got two bladed swords. Exotic, which means I can't use it. I would have to. Uh, get that feat which allows me to use it uh, weapon size large okay so by weapon size because there's different races that obviously have different statures uh, like humans half orcs uh, half elves elves um, because they're they're bigger in stature uh, they can use these uh, large weapon large weapons um, this one is medium weapon so I would be able to use this and a shield if I wanted to. Um, we'll just get the small shield. Get the small shield if I wanted to. If you were a smaller race, like a halfling or you know a dwarf or a gnome, these medium weapons would be two-handed weapons. You you wouldn't be able to use this in a shield with a smaller uh, smaller race. So just uh, keep that in mind. Uh, I'm not even sure if they would be able to use these large weapons. Maybe. I never really actually. I never really tried. I don't know. Maybe. Um, some of the shop stuff. You got some scrolls here. Oh, scrolls by the way also works with. Uh, you remember to use magic device, which were only for. Actually, we don't have it here, but it's only for rogues and bards, which gives you the ability to use things that uh, your race or class wouldn't normally be able to use. If you had a uh, use magic device you can actually use all these scrolls which is pretty cool 
uh, magic items, uh, thieves tool, this is for opening locks, healer's kit, we got traps here if you want to put traps down, uh, I guess we can uh, talk a little bit about the combat, um, which is uh, part of this tutorial, what up Berna, that's enough Berna, alright, uh, so this is the uh, kind of like the training area, Herbin, classic Herbin, I'm just not going to talk to him. Uh, so this we can kind of see how the combat works exactly and uh, by the way you can you can pause this game during the campaign so if you wanted to plan out your uh, you know your execution if you wanted to do this or that you can be like okay let's pause it uh, maybe we'll drink this potion first and then you know uh, uh, I don't know switch weapons if you wanted to I don't know but it's good for uh, you know planning in the campaign in certain multiplayer games they won't allow this for obvious reasons, because there's other people in the server, and they obviously you don't want to pause the game for everybody. Um, so that's an interesting uh, thing you can do. Uh, so here's how the combat works. If you attack, I'm just gonna pause it so you can see it. It'll show the initiative roll. Initiative roll basically uh, it's sort of like the order, the order of who's going, who's going first, who's going second, who's going third, sort of that sort of thing. Um, the higher the initiative roll, the higher you are in the like pecking order of what when you're going to attack first uh, so we got initial roll of 10 7 plus 3 is 10 I think the 3 is from uh, my dexterity I think I don't know why they don't have it on here they should have initiative on here too but anyways uh, 10 is not that great of a roll I mean you get you rolled a 7 out of 20 so that, I mean that's enough um, so we're gonna attack the combat dummy since the combat dummy cannot even attack us there's you know it's kind of like a one-way so one-way attack right here so we roll the we roll the 13 here 13 out of 20 adding plus three from our attack bonus with the long sword we had that plus one attack bonus that you get as a, a ranger from a, a level one then we added two strength which is three 13 plus three is 16 that's a hit right here which basically means that this uh, combat dummy's armor class is less than 16 uh, so this is the damage right here boom uh, damage is combat dummy five physical damage there's different types of damage you can do from like you know there's like physical then there's like fire damage there's lightning damage or I think it's called electric damage acid damage you know all different kinds of damage and there's also different uh, weapon types too uh, or damage types let's just say there's slashing this one's piercing uh, this one is piercing and there's also bludgeoning which is like hammers and stuff some weapons have a mix between two uh, and that's important for certain uh, characters that might be more vulnerable to certain types of damage types so I think uh, skeletons is a, is a good example skeletons uh, they're more resistant to piercing and slashing damage so if you're attacking them with a longsword or a dagger if you were to do a certain amount of damage they're gonna they're gonna negate some of the damage because they're more uh, resistant to that damage type but if you were to use a bludgeoning like a hammer or you know any anything like that then you would uh, get full damage from, uh, to them because they don't have a uh, they're more vulnerable to to uh, bludgeoning attacks so just keep that in mind for certain characters uh, this character I don't think has anything that's how you examine by the way you can right click then you can see uh, different types of options. Can't animal, can't animal empathy him. Uh, so this is the uh, description that I put Paul Rudd's brother. Challenge rating. Uh, that basically just means uh, a level difference. So I think very difficult means they're one level above you or two levels above you. If it's challenging, uh, it basically means they are on the exact same level as you. So I think we're probably both level one here. Effortless. And easy just means they're, uh, I think, like three or four levels under you. Basically, just, just uh, determines the level difference between you and uh, whatever character this is. Can I examine myself? Can I see if I'm Paul Rhodes' brother? I don't think so. Um, issue commands for uh, companions. If you have companions with you, you got emotes. So, you know, little socializing. You can nod, you can you can be tired, you can beg, you can be, act like you're poisoned, fall down backwards, fall down forwards, read, 
drink potion, you know. Some of the stuff we're interacting. So we'll continue fighting this character. Uh, he's not vulnerable to anything really. Uh, you would be able to see that on here. These are just some of the, uh, the uh, what's it called? Little uh, attributes associated with them, the little effects. Uh, we don't have any right now. Alright, so how did these rolls go? Got 18, plus 3 is 21. Obviously a hit if uh, 16 was a hit before. Uh, close to a critical hit too. 14 plus 3 is 17, obviously a hit. 10 damage. What's my damage range? Oh, that was full damage. I did max damage on that. Uh, so yeah, that would basically range. So your attacks would range from 3 to 10. Easy mathematics, you just add this modifier to the first and second number to get your range. There's a critical threat range. So that's basically combat. Easy combat. Uh, let's talk to this guy. Oh, I didn't even speak to Hergen. Oh, okay. Oh, we don't have to. Doesn't really, it's not, not necessary. Um, you can also stack. Stack potions if you want. Up to 10. You got a torch here if you wanted a torch. If it's uh, super dark. Uh, you got some rings. You can have two rings, one belt, one helmet. Gloves slash bracers, depending on what you wear. You got cloaks, boots, and a uh, amulet um, as your uh, inventory, uh, you know, range. Or uh, if you can go to this weapons rack. Yeah, I gotta talk to a guy, but I don't care. Um, we got a heavy crossbow. We got a longbow. Since I'm Legolas, we'll stick with the longbow. You can equip it. You can also uh, put stuff on this uh, hot bar. So you can just easily switch from one or two. You can also use the F keys, F3, F4, easy switch. Um, stealth mode, F1. Your character goes transparent. It basically uses uh, the uh, hide skill and the uh, move silently skill. Kind of uses it in tandem. There's also a uh, search skill. Um, oops. Uh, oh, my character doesn't even need it because I have uh, keen senses. That's nice. What's Keen Senses do again? Characters with this feat may apply their full search skill even when making a passive search. Oh, that's nice. So I don't even, as a ranger, you don't even need this. Because it's just automatically working all the time. If I wasn't a ranger, uh, you would have to activate this, which would slow your character down. So, you know how I'm running normally like this? If I had stealth mode on, or search mode on, it would slow your character down. If you had both on, uh, it would slow your character even more. But uh, luckily for uh, rangers, they don't uh, need to activate that. It's always on. That's that's good. Um, short bow. Oh, you can actually see the uh, attack bonus difference. 1 plus 2 is 3. Long bow. 1 plus 3 is 4. You get no uh, damage modifier because uh, oh, it's a ranged weapon. Well, specifically, it's either a uh, bow or crossbow if it was throwing weapons do they have throwing weapons here? no they don't if they did throwing weapons would allow you uh, to use your strength modifier but uh, crossbows and bows they don't at least not right now in the future uh, they'll have this thing called mighty mighty plus one or mighty plus two and that basically allows you to use a certain amount of strength modifier so if it said mighty plus one it would just be able to use one strength modifier even if you had two it would still only be plus one so it would be like one to eight plus one if it was mighty plus two it would be uh adding two to your strength if it was plus three and you only had tw uh, two strength like modifier strength it would still only use two so it depends on your uh strength modifier do some range attacks oh wow add a one roll a one plus four is five that's clearly a miss Another miss. So we already know this uh, target has at least uh, 8 armor class. Oh, I got a hit there. 9 plus 4 is 13. Okay, so his armor class is less than 13, but more than 8. Um, oh, it's invulnerable, so you can't even damage it. But That's how the uh, combat works. This The easy rolling, simple rolling. Uh, you can see some guys fighting here. These are just NPCs. Um... I mean, that's pretty much it for, for like the basics of it. Or you know what, let's go to a character that I already have who is uh, way, way powerful, way more powerful. I'll save the prologue for you guys to do, you know. There's a couple little surprises here and there and 
maybe I won't, I won't spoil that, I'll just uh, let you guys do it. Alright, so when you get to a certain level, like I'm level 20 already. Um, and uh, I don't know if I mentioned before, since Purple Dragon Knight uh, is a, uh, a prestige class, so prestige classes, they don't count towards that multi-classing uh, um, XP deduction that we talked before. So even though I'm three levels apart, or I guess uh, my f a human, human doesn't, uh, their uh, favorite class is any. So right now, my favorite class would be a fighter. And since my rogue and purple dragon knight are, are one level apart, I wouldn't have a thing anyways. But uh, purple dragon knight, since it's uh, a prestige class, this doesn't even count towards the uh, XP deduction. Um, so even if my rogue was a level like 10, uh, that that uh, separation from well, fighter fighter would be less than rogue if my rogue is a level ten. But even that you know four level difference, I still wouldn't get an XP deduction because uh, um, because it's a prestige class and just uh, that it's sort of like another favorite class. Um, so I'm getting no XP deduction. Uh, strength, uh, I got three. Dexterity. The green basically means uh, something is being added to increase your that whatever uh, attribute it is so something that I'm wearing right now or a spell is increasing my dexterity I already know which one it is it's a uh, bracers of dexterity adds plus four dexterity so I think originally I had 16 um, let's take it out 16 there you go um, let me put this here what, what is this how am I wearing this thing I don't want that thing um, so these are the attacks per round. So right now my character has four attacks per round. So if you were to, uh, I'm just going to avoid these guys to show you guys the uh, difference in the amount of attacks per round. So if you guys remember that first time, um, if you had to actually, uh, time it, it really was one attack every six seconds for the most part, you know, maybe a little less than six seconds. Um, but this shows you, I have four attacks per round. So. Let's take out my sword and shield. Get little uh, effects on it too. Divine Fury. Electrical damage, which is why it shows that electricity thing. So if I were to attack this, look at that. Two attacks. I had two attacks in less than a second. Where is it? Sneak attack. I had two sneak attacks. 14 plus 24 is 38. And 8 plus 19 is 27. So I had two attacks in less than one second. So, which is obviously having more attacks per round is obviously better. Um, so these four attacks would be within six seconds. Um, I also got sneak attack because uh, rogues get sneak attack bonuses. These are some of my new perks. Oh, it was heroic shield. Oh, it's purple dragon knight. All right. So uh, yeah, sneak attack. Whenever the character makes a successful attack against an opponent who is flat-footed, cannot see them, or who is in combat with someone else. The character's blow delivers extra damage. This damage is 1d6 uh, at first level, an additional 1d6 every two levels after that. Uh, this extra damage is not multiplied in case of a critical hit. And certain monsters are immune to uh, sneak attacks. So right now my sneak attack is 3d6. So if no one was looking at me and I were to attack, I would do uh, 1d10 plus 3 damage plus all of this. So my minimum would be 4, 5, Eight, so it would be from eight to thirteen, uh, nineteen, twenty to twenty-two. So it would be uh, what was it? Nine? No, eight to twenty-two. Three, four, five, seven to twenty-two. Why can't I do math? I cannot do simple math. Four, five, six, seven, eight. No, eight to twenty-two damage. Plus, if he wasn't looking at me, uh, another three d six after that. So. Doing a lot of damage. Uh, combat dummy will save. Oh, you can kind of see the wolf saves too. So this attack actually has a uh, on hit stun DC 14, 50% uh, for two rounds. So basically that means uh, my DC is 14. So if his will was higher, what's my will at right now? My will is 20. So let's say I've somehow like attacked myself. If my sword's DC is 14, which says right here. That's basically like the number that you need to uh, to save. So since that combat dummy had zero will, 
it was 8 plus 0 equals 8, obviously less than my DC 14, so he failed that. He would have been stunned for two rounds. Um, if I was attacking myself, it would have been 8 plus 12, uh, which would be 20, which is over my DC, so I would have saved that, so I wouldn't have been stunned if I was attacking myself. If you don't have the uh, two weapon fighting skill or the ambidextrous skill, do I really not have another weapon? Maybe I'll just buy one. Um, if you're not proficient in two weapon fighting, then you uh, have a pretty big deduction in attack bonus because you're obviously not used to holding two weapons, so you're not as accurate. Uh, I'll just show you guys uh, the difference. Uh, let's just get a quick, easy weapon. Let's get the scimitar. There you go. Lost 28 gold. Transaction successful. All right, so look at my stats right now, my attack bonus. I got 24, 19, 14, and 9. So basically, I'm attacking four uh, per round, four attacks per round. The first attack is plus 24, second 19, uh, third 14, and or third yeah, third 14 and fourth is nine. If I were to put this, so I'm two weapon fighting, it goes down. So I'm down to 18, 13, 8, and three, and a plus 11. But I'm attacking five attacks per round now, because now I have that extra weapon. And even certain at a certain point, you can even have more attacks per round, like even more than that. So, can we attack something else? Now we have one extra attack per round. Oh, whoops! I hit the uh, console button. Um, more attacks per round. Boom! Look at that. Boom! Boom! That's four already. Five. That was six seconds. So let's try to count. One, two. Three, four, five, six. So that was like six seconds. Oh, I might have went a little too fast. So let's counter right now. One, two, three, four, five, six. So pretty much every six seconds I have five attacks. So it starts here. One, two, three, four. That's four, and then five within six seconds and then another five attacks in the next six seconds um, obviously it's a lot easier because this combat dummy's armor class is probably so low that I'm, a, I'm hitting it so much um, oh the off off hand weapon too like the damage is a lot less in terms of the modifier I have plus three here but it's only plus one here even though if I, I have a plus three uh, strength modifier it's it doesn't use a all of it. Um, I don't think he has any spells. He's got a couple of uh, feats here. I got knockdown, improved expertise. So if you include that, my armor class goes up by 10. Um, but I lose 10 attack bonus for everything. Every round I lose 10. So, but it's good defense, you know. You got the power attack, which uh, adds. Uh, to my damage modifier uh, in uh, replacement of minus five attack bonus so minus five here plus five here add that minus five all here plus five here um, plus five here too but minus five here uh, you got disarm got a longbow here I wanted to longbow also works with the attack bonus I got four I mean not attack bonus attack around attacks per round I can attack four times per round so I'm like Super Lego loss here, look at this. Bam, bam. Bam. Pretty cool. Um, some of the stuff that I have, immunity to fear. That's pretty much it. Armor class 30, 181 health. Um, oh, I do have the uh, use magic device. So I have no, no spell casting here. Purple Dragon Knight, I don't think is really, a, it's not a spell caster. Uh, but because I have used magic device, uh, I can use some of these spells. Oh, yes. uh, Wizard, Sorcerer, Ranger, Druid, Cleric, Bard. I am none of that. None of that. Uh, but I can still cast it because I got used magic device. So I'm just going to read it. Bam. Got a dire wolf. Super cool. Can cast some more spells. Can cast some bark skin on myself. Can cast it on the dog. Bark skin gives you like extra AC. I'm like a tree now. Some cool stuff. 
mage armor if I wanted. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, cure light wounds. Uh, basically, I think it's like 1d6 health that you get, plus uh, your class level, I think, up to like plus 5. And then cure moderate wounds is like 2d6, plus 5. Uh, this is like 3d6, 4d6, and it just, you know, keeps getting higher for all these, uh, oops, keeps getting higher for all these, uh, cure wounds. Um, what else we got here? Fox Cunning, what is this for? I think this is for, uh, intelligence. No, this is for, uh, oh, it is intelligence, yep, my intelligence went up. Eagle Splendor, um, these were all different, uh, ability scores, okay, stop attacking then. Yeah, you can right, also right click, um, ask him to guard you, stand your ground, attack nearest, heal me, obviously he can't heal me, he's a, he's a freaking wolf, come on now. Um, did I go through everything? I think so. I think I pretty much went through everything. Um, oh, there's different uh, AC modifiers too, that's a little bit complicated too. So, certain armor have uh, uh, modifiers. This is plus 3 AC armor modifier. Um, this one is AC deflection modifier. So I think you can only have one uh, of a certain type of modifier. And it'll just use the highest number of that certain modifier. So, um, let's say, does any of this have any modifiers on it? So this is plus, C, uh, plus 3 AC deflection modifier. Um, there's another one that has an AC modifier. Uh, where is it? Shields have their own modifier too. AC shield modifier. You can't have more than one. Well, you can, but it just it will use the highest highest one. All right, I don't have one, but basically, if you had a a, in a ring that had you know plus one AC plus one AC deflection modifier, it would not. I don't think so. It would not add that plus one to your AC because you already have something that's adding to the AC deflection modifier plus three or maybe it's like a maximum maybe you can only have a maximum of like plus four deflection modifier so if you had like a plus two to plus two AC deflection modifier for a ring and then you had this plus three then maybe it, like the maximum would only go up to four so maybe you'll just add like one more not exactly sure AC dodge modifier so that's a new one so if you were to get rid of that Go down by two. Try to get rid of this. What is this again? Plus three. Go down to thirty. And it also shows shows the cloak too, which is always kind of cool. Um, bracers. Um, that's basically it. Uh, I don't think I have anything else. Got a scythe here. Two d four, which kind of it doesn't necessarily mean one d eight because one would not be the minimum that you would have. It oh, it would be two. Um, it would be 2d8, which basically it's just this multiplied by this is the maximum you can get. This is the minimum you can get. Critical threat rate is m min or times 4, so any damage you do would be multiplied by 4, which is pretty good. That's basically Neverwinter Nights the, to start off. Then you can kind of figure out everything on your own. Um, you know, the amount of like perks that I have here is within 20 levels, so don't expect to get this early on this amount of stuff what you can do is you know if you wanted more perks you can just multi-class early on and then you would get all the base feats that you would get with those three characters so you have like triple the amount of well not necessarily triple because some some feats kind of overlap other classes um, but you know if you wanted a whole lot more perks you can literally just have three different classes that all have different perks so you can get that much more um, but you have to realize that if you multi-class a lot, there's a, you're not really developing only one. So you're going to be weak in all three classes as opposed to being strong in two or strong in one. Um, so it's always good to kind of boost up or sort of evenly match one or two classes first. And then when you're feeling confident, you can add a third class if you wanted to or a prestige class. But at the end of the day, it's really up to you, um, however you want to play. Um, for, for the most part, that's it. That's a good base of uh, getting
getting into Neverwinter Nights. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Maybe we'll maybe we'll do like a wizard class on their own, an arcane spell class, spell casting class, separately. But that's a that's the basics. That's the basics of it. All these perks you can kind of read up on your own once you understand like the lingo of some of this stuff. It's very easy to uh, to understand. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, that's basically it. Thanks guys for watching. Let me know if you want a part two and on anything extra questions on anything else let me know